Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Vice President of Engineering for Google, Vic Gundotra. <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. You made it, even at this early hour. I hope you enjoyed that party last night. Uh, how, yeah? How, how about that spider? Was that cool or what? After a few drinks, I thought that thing was going to chase me. A lot of fun. And let me also welcome uh, the many thousands who are watching our live stream on YouTube. Yesterday, just for your information, we had over 24,000 people watching it concurrently live. So in addition to the 5,000 plus folks we had here, we had almost 30,000 watch us yesterday. And so welcome to everyone watching on YouTube. <laughs> to begin today's keynote, I'd like to start with a story. It's a story of my very first day on the job at Google. Now, I'm sure you've all been uh, at a new job. You understand the apprehensiveness you might feel with a new office, new people. It was on that very first day that I met a man named Mr. Andy Rubin. Now, I suspect most of you know who Andy Rubin is. Uh, at the time, he was responsible for what was then a secret project codenamed Android. And on that first day, Andy enthusiastically described to me the team's mission and purpose. And as he spoke, I'll level with you. I was skeptical. In fact, I interrupted Andy. And I said, Andy, I don't get it. Does the world really need another mobile operating system? Google's about advertising. Shouldn't we be on every phone? To this day, I remember Andy's response. And he made two points. The first point Andy made was that it was critically important to provide a free mobile operating system, an open source operating system that would enable innovation at every level of the stack. In other words, OEMs should be free to build all kinds of devices, devices with keyboards, without keyboards, with front-facing cameras, uh, two inches, three inches, four inches, that operators should be able to compete on the strength and coverage of their network, 2G, 3G, 4G, LTE, CDMA, and that in the end, with innovation coming at every layer, it would be the consumer who would be able to benefit by getting the best device at the best network for them. I remember Andy's second point. He argued that if Google did not act, we faced a draconian future. A future where one man, one company, one device, one carrier would be our only choice. That's a future we don't want. So if you believe in openness, if you believe in choice, if you believe in innovation from everyone, then welcome to Android. Now, let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about the momentum that we've achieved in 18 months. It's been a year and a half since we've been started uh, with Android. H how are we doing? Let's do a little bit of a report card. First of all, let's demonstrate some momentum. It's hard to believe that in only 18 months, We've achieved over 60 compatible devices where your software, where your applications can run. And these devices are not just from uh, you know, people you haven't heard of. These are from the leading consumer electronic companies in the world. Sony Ericsson, HTC, Motorola, and many others who are producing devices that meet the needs of consumers. We think this is pretty fantastic progress in just 18 months. Of course, it's not just the creation of the devices. It's the 21 OEMs in 48 countries and over 59 carriers who joined the Android revolution. Of course, producing devices, making them available uh, across a, a multitude of countries and carriers doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to see adoption. Have users found Android to be something that they desire? Well, last year we reported, uh, late last year, that we had reached a sales run rate, a daily activation rate of over 30,000 units a day. In February, just a few months later, we announced that our daily run rate had achieved 60,000 units a day. I'm very proud to announce today that our run rate, daily activations, has now passed 100,000 a day. 
Go Android. Of course, that momentum has led to some pretty significant milestones. One of the ones we're most proud of is that this quarter we are now second in the United States in smartphone sales, second only to RIM. And that's pretty amazing progress in 18 months. We're second in smartphone sales, but according to AdMob data, we are now first this quarter in total web and app usage. That's fantastic. You know, we set a crazy internal milestone for ourselves. You know, the, the phones are being uh, used by consumers, but what are they being used for? And we set a crazy internal goal when we shipped turn-by-turn -turn navigation for Android six months ago. We thought it might be possible to have a half a billion miles uh, navigated in the first year. In hardly six months, we've now crossed a billion miles navigated with turn-by-turn -turn navigation on Android. So users just love that feature. Thank you. There are some who say that users don't use Google search on smartphones. Well, we're a company driven by data, not by opinions. And you know what the data shows? The data shows that we've seen a 5x growth in the past two years. That's not just on Android, but that's across all smartphone categories. People love Google search. You give them a great browser, and they do Google search. Tremendous, awesome usage of the web on these devices. Of course, what they love is applications. And today, I'm happy to announce that we've crossed 50,000 applications in the Android marketplace. And really, the credit there goes to you. Thank you for the 180,000 developers. Thank you. The 180,000 developers who've joined the Android revolution. Uh, really, it's your hard work that's paired with the innovation that's coming from OEMs and carriers that makes the mobile ecosystem work. We certainly couldn't have done this without you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting Android. Now, let's talk about the platform. We finished a section on momentum. Let's talk about what we're doing uh, to make the Android platform continue to evolve and get better. Now, in this section, I have over 20 demos, 22 demos, I believe. And in order to help me with that, I'd like to invite up on stage Matt Waddell, my partner in crime here. Many of you may remember Matt from last year. And we're going to go through a number of demos that's going to really showcase uh, what we're doing with Android. There are five major areas of investments that we're making in the platform. Now, we've been quick to iterate with Android. In fact, there's been seven releases in those 18 months. And today, we're announcing the next release, Android 2.2, codenamed Froyo. What's in Froyo? Let's talk about five pillars. Number one, let's begin with speed. Now, as you developers know, the Android architecture is one that's built upon a virtual machine, the Dolvik virtual machine. And we think it's very important. It's a critical design decision we made that future proofs your application. We have big dreams for Android. And Part of those dreams mean that Android will go to new places with new chip architectures. But by having your applications right to the virtual machine, why we believe we can go carry the entire ecosystem to exciting new areas. Of course, that only works if the virtual machine is fast. And the Dalvik VM has done its job being fast, efficient, and automatic and easy for developers. But we can do even better. And we're very proud to announce that in Froyo, we've added a JIT a just-in-time compiler which gives up to 2 to 5x speed up of your apps on the exact same hardware. Now, this is best demonstrated, uh, and let's do that. Let's go to our first demo. We're going to show you um, a game. The game has been modified for purposes of this demo. Uh, you guys may know Replica Island. Here's what we've done to modify the game. The game now will show the frame rate that it's rendering in the bottom right-hand corner. If the frame rate drops beneath 30 frames a second, the screen will flash red. Exact same hardware, exact same game. Top is running Froyo with JIT compilation. The bottom is running Eclair. We're going to introduce a crazy number of monsters into this game. So you see the monsters keep getting added, increasing the complexity of the game. You see the frame rate at the top. And as we add complexity, it starts to slow down. 
you'll note there at the bottom, there are times when we're dropping beneath 30 frames a second and it's flashing red. You'll note at the top with Froyo, exactly the same game runs much better, never dropping beneath 30 frames a second, all because of the JIT compiler. All right, let's go back to slides.